in india there is a tradition that we start every auspicious occasion with the remembrance to the almighty with this i will recite the famous gayatri mantra to just count the day om bhur bhuhaswa Namaskar. I am a woman. You may find me playing the role of a daughter, a wife, a girlfriend, a sister, and at the end of the day, I am a woman. I may be broken for a while, but that's okay. I am working on it because I am not the one to leave a mess lying around. I would rather stroll all alone in the dark than become someone's shadow. I surpassed everything that came to affect me. I can show you that I can swim through the worst and still be the best. And look, everyone is hearing the roar of woman's silence. I took a big lot of time to put up a word and now that I have developed a voice, I am not going to be silent. Despite all the cages I get caught in, I will take these broken wings and watch me beautifully fly across the sky. The globe across needs strong women. Women who would lift themselves and build others. Who will love and be loved. Women who would conquer both soft and aggressive. Women of determined heart and strong will. To quote, there is no limit to what we as women can accomplish. Tried and tested. Very good evening to all of you. I am Nikita Bose, the Chief Executive Officer of Finance Crafter Enterprises, the State Chairperson for the Women Entrepreneurship Empowerment Wing of CIMSME and the State Co-Chair at CIMSME for Uttar Pradesh and also the host for this lovely evening. Today, I hereby warmly welcome all the uh, guests and dignitaries for being a part of this beautiful celebration of the Global, Swo Global Women's Business Summit that celebrates the spirit of women entrepreneurs. CIMSME, the idea and vision of Mr. Santosh Ganesh is an organization that works brilliantly on the upliftment and betterment of the entrepreneurial community makes a difference. It's an organization where women are heard, given equal opportunities and are given unlimited space to spread across their wings and fly. With all these amazing thoughts in mind, I would request our national president, uh, Anju Bajaj ma'am, to do the inaugural welcome ceremony, give the uh, opening comments and commence this great day. Anju ma'am had been there yesterday as well and today we would request her to be with us and start the day. Anju ma'am, over to you. Thank you, Nikita. Thank you for the warm welcome to all. Namaskar. It gives me an immense pleasure to welcome you all for the second day of the summit. We have lots to learn from each other and empower ourselves. I do hope that the Business Summit will educate, transform and inspire women across the globe and we will work on the path of direction, determination and discipline. India is carving its niche to go vocal for local and at the same time we look forward to market our products globally, broaden our horizons on vision of our businesses and learn and share with other women across the globe. Women empowering other women in their communities, states, countries will make us globally strong. We need to include strategies for using technology to combat illiteracy, support women with businesses and make our presence felt. I learn from the experiences of others and encourage you all to communicate your ideas 
whether critical, supportive, theoretical, or experimental. I'm excited to get to know all of you new faces and wish inspiring and successful ideas will lead us towards growth. Inequality is not about who has more. It is about my ability to reach my uh, aspirations. Motivational speakers, Shiv Kera quotes, winners are not different, but they do things differently. So we all need to be winners today. We need our work to be shared. We need to develop advanced cross-cultural programs, awareness that can help initiate and sustain relationships globally. No one is able to solve the problems alone. We need to come together to talk, to listen, to share, and to implement. It's said that when things stop growing, they begin to die by Charles Go. So let's wake up, stir ourselves, work for the better world, and we women can do it and make all odds win the situations. Simply having vision and values doesn't work. We need to implement them and raise the bars very high. I congratulate you for your commitment and active participation of all and wish you all the success for this summit. Thank you. Namaskar. That was amazing, Anju, ma'am, as, as usual. And uh, uh, we would uh, like to invite uh, uh, Ms. Nabumita Majumdar today. She uh, is the national chairperson for CIMSME and also the national chair for the WEE vertical of CIMSME. Words do shawl for, uh, for shawl, uh, I'm so sorry. Words do fall short to describe this beautiful and dynamic lady. She is the President's Awardee, recipient of 100 Achievers Awardee from the Ministry of Women and Child Development. She is the founder of Nabomita.com, top 10 inspiring Indian, uh, Indian entrepreneurs by Asia Tech Podcast, top 10 thought leaders on future of world by the Blue Jeans Network and Silicon Republic, best 100 young speaker award Cambridge English in Asia 2011 Western region, top 25 influential women on Twitter as per CIOL.com, top 16 entrepreneurs in India by Women of Jaipur, uh, top HR influencer by SHR in India, top 100 tech influencers, top 15 thought leaders on future of work by Silicon India magazine and many more. Over to you, Novomita ji. Welcome. Welcome to this great event. Over to you, ma'am. Uh, good evening. Thank you so much for, um, for allowing me to speak on day two. I'm grateful. Uh, to the organizer and to the team who has um, who has created this event. My request to everyone who's listening to me, whether you are running a business, whether you're leading a team, whether you're trying to start a business, every moment is crucial. And now we stand on a crossroad wherein the, the world has completely redesigned itself. The world has completely restructured itself into a new ways of working, into a new ways of business ar arrangement. In this world, what has, what has really changed? What has really been different? Why will it really matter to us as women, right? To be gender specific, certain, certain areas, right? Being, uh, being at office nine to five is no longer is no longer relevant. Being being there in uh, in face to face meeting is completely is completely a no no, right? Business travels are a no no. Again, uh, chatting up with someone on a smoking certain uh, networking opportunities are all gone. So what is left? What is left is business acumen. What is left? is the credibility to build something in a times where the world is falling apart and the disruptions are everywhere for us as women we have we have faced these kind of situation in our own ways through every walks of life whether you are a daughter whether you're a girl whether you're a sister whether you're a mother or you are you're a friend 
you have worked through all these disruptions wherein a you couldn't be there 9 to 5 of at office when you probably you were delivering a baby you couldn't go for business travel because probably your, your kid had kid required you to be at home you wanted to be at home and take care of family better and not not attend all those endless networking parties look all those requirements have gone out of the door what is required now is your business acumen and your capability to build a business and bring people together remember one thing people will always the team that you are building will always be there themselves when they fail you as a leader when the when the projects that you expected them to run falls apart right on its face earns your company a bad name remember one thing it is not their fault that's all their capability was that's all they could do what are you going to do as a leader do think about it what well, how will you bring the name back whom will you hold accountable how are you bringing fallen pieces the fallen pieces apart together and bringing up a new world yes you're a woman yes the nature chose chose you to be a creator so obviously it's your innate capability to build it and you will build it in terms of revenue in terms of money in terms of building a credible business that stands the test of time it's now it's pandemic today it will be something else tomorrow it was it was downturn yesterday and the demonetization day before and some political issue bit the day before 911 if you look back you will not run out of excuses if you look ahead you will never run out of excuses but those excuses will never be enough to fail those are the reasons which will make you stand strong and win building a business takes a lot more than words you may have a dream to build a technology business you may have a dream to build a food business you may have a dream to build a supply chain business a problem that only you can see a solution that doesn't let you sleep at 2 am in the morning that's what you are here for that problem that you know that only you can solve whether you have the money to solve it whether you have the capability to solve it whether you have the people to solve it nothing stops you you are on you have to solve it till you solve it you won't rest that makes you a leader that brings you to this platform that makes you realize why you will become the business leader of tomorrow <coughs> sorry i have not been keeping well since last few days going back to you it's this today it's not about me it's about you so as you build that dream that problem the solution that you have with you that doesn't let let you sleep at 2 am in the morning what stops you that you do not have money let me tell you the first product that i built i built it from my living room i did not have an office i did not have any team around me and i did not have any money it did not by god's grace the way we worked out the business the way we worked around the pro pro product the lean operations management we did not require money we did not require investment from anyone we created revenues our revenues got us through till we had revenues we ran it on our own and then once we had revenue we ran it and it became one of the top most ranking alexa internet ranking community in the world serving 3 million worldwide from our living room i'm a woman i'm not an iitian i do not have a team i do not have a money i do not have that i did not have that money to build that product if you think these four excuses are there with you obviously they are not the excuses why you should fail they are the, they are the reasons why you will stand strong why you will win i have been building many more products since then i have been working in many more in many more business consultancies prod projects uh, a lot bigger businesses since then a lot bigger responsibility since then it was it, it's no longer a business it's nation building it's creating something for people whom i, I will never see whom, whom who will never know that i existed in this world 
but i whatever i have done it will it will last it stand the test of time it will last much longer than i am gone remember one thing the day you go away your loved ones around you will cry they will remember you for all the good things but today you decide what you would want to be remembered for do you want to be remembered for your flaws do you want to be remembered for all the failures do you want to be remembered for all the excuses that you are picking up or do you want to be remembered as that woman whom no excuses could could hold back no excuses was good enough for abha no amount of pandemic no amount of downturn was good enough for her she was ahead of all those things building businesses again not not just not just a bunch of few good words yes it's easier said than done yesterday i can sit and talk so comfortably after living all those days let me tell you another incident while building my first product facebook got uh, funded by sequoia capital right we had stars in our eyes oh wow sequoia capital silicon valley stars then came one day the silicon valley invited me to speak there it was a huge opportunity for me i lived literally lived my dream i when i worked when i worked from my living room i did not have an office when people were ask me which office do you work i used to say no i do not have office i work from home they used to laugh at me all those days i used to dream of facebook i used to dream of silicon valley so when i reached silicon valley i lived my dream and then one day in one of the headquarters of sequoia capital i did get to go sit on the other side of the table and talk to the people who matters i lived my dream but did i make that investment did i get that investment no why did i not get because i made mistake yes i'm saying it out loud i made a mistake which i did not realize then it took me time to realize the mistake i made <coughs> being fired up is good but being fired up without wisdom is bad being aggressive excellent being aggressive without a cause is bad being fraud being very very a uh, very very driven is extremely good but not being able to explain it to the other side of the table helps no cause in some time you two will sit on the pyramid of power and you know what the pyramid of power is going to be made of failures and mistake yes today Absolutely. i sit on a platform a, a complete pyramid of power which has completely risen out of my failures and my mistakes i don't hide them i don't i don't shy out of them i speak them i speak about them i say them out loud my rejections i say them out loud my failures my losses i say them out loud because those are the days that make me who i am today those are the days who told me nothing can stop me i am going to go ahead i am going to be the one i had always dreamt about and take trust me i have I, i have lived days that i did not even dream about when i was working from my living room i did not imagine the president of india will award me for it i have lived beyond my dreams so with you am i <coughs> <coughs> sorry No, like Pita ji, are you? Yeah, you are just uh, nice. not keeping well, so we will not uh, bother you much. So uh, just take rest, and it it we are so thankful that you just you know took time, and uh, in this situation also you came out and uh, you know did the inaugural wording. Please take care, and thank you so much uh, for you know starting the event, commencing the lovely day today. Thank you so much, ma'am. We are thank all you. inspired by you. I'm so grateful. moving on. <laughs> Thank you, so much, yeah. Thank you so much. I'm grateful and all the best to everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. So, uh, let let us move towards the introduction of our guest today. Uh to begin with, I would just say sometimes the smallest step in the right direction ends up being the biggest step in life. So, I believe 
there must be stories in the lives of the of our honorable speakers who are present today i would like to introduce our chief royal guest honorable dr amina ali uh, dr amina ali is a naturopathic doctor specializing in obstetrics uh, obstetrics and gynecology she has been organic medicine uh, has been in organic medicine home birthing and the maternal education education of women for the last 29 years she is a proud decorated gulf war uh, war veteran and uh, and the 2021 president elect of the rotary club district 1790 in new york her most recent accomplishments include in 2018 she was appointed as a special envoy to un women gambia with an accepted ngo slash cso dozier for the royal women's maternal health care access and offer solutions for our elders to be able to age in play, age in peace through their efforts as a member of the global alliance for the rights of the older people she is the 2019 us representative for the international model un association and the newest member to the international human rights commission in geneva where she serves unrecognized sovereign tribes undocumented international cultures stateless landless and countless oppressed and displaced indigenous people around the world a very warm welcome to our uh, royal chief guest please over to you ma'am over to you dr amina ali please go ahead good morning good morning good morning from the us i am here in new york i'm about 10 minutes from the united nations and i bring warm greetings from the un un women the federation of international gender and human rights the african union as well as ecowas and all of the international organizations that meet and exceed the standards of women. I want to come to you today to thank each and every one of you for being here, for listening, for understanding and for wanting to do better for what it is that women have in this world. Oppression is here, it is real, and some of the things that we're going to be talking about today is going to be ways in which we can cure this by opening dialogue communication and bettering our communities for the sake of humanity. I want to bring to you three points in which we use here in the US especially in our international work. Um it is a human centered design that has allowed a thematic principle to make into real time solutions. We don't deal with data that is 10 and 15 and 20 years old we deal with the woman down the street that has a story to tell and the experience behind it we deal with the woman that has been tortured and oppressed we deal with the woman that was a child bride now birthing a third baby before she's 20 we are dealing with the woman that has a story to tell but yet has no platform and no one to listen to her voice this human centered design embraces the belief that all problems even the seemingly intractable ones such as poverty and gender equality and clean water are solvable they are solvable moreover it means that these people that are dealing with it are the ones that actually can bring the greatest solution how good would it be if someone was to ask someone that has experienced that what it is that they wish for the betterment of their people rather than someone that just comes in and works for it? One of the better reasons that I got into this was because although I was helping women birth their children a lot of the women had children and still didn't know who they were so they were building on an ideology that allowed each generation to be less and less knowledgeable of self knowledgeable of who they need to be and then what tools and apparatus they need to bring to their communities a lot of women didn't know who they were when they gave birth to children yet they were having children and they were raising these children in these same environments. So three things that we wanted to bring to focus in this is understanding the causes of these behaviors. There are normative, causative and reactionary behaviors that precipitate each of these multi-generational customs, traditions and allowances. The first thing we're going to be talking about today is normative. Normative is why is it normal in our culture why do we allow it why have we allowed it for so many generations 
in, in speaking about business and bringing it forward in the entrepreneurial world, you really have to dig deep into the person. Entrepreneur does not get paid to uh, have a task or a, a, a commodity. They get paid to solve a problem. And when we deal with the problem, we have to deal with it in the humanistic side. Um, as I deal with NGOs, CSOs, and of course the sustainable development goals, I have to see that all of them involve human beings, regardless if you're a banker or you're an accountant, whether you're a doctor or a lawyer or you're an engineer, you are still human at the core of you. So we have to deal with why we do the things that we do and why we have the things that happen in our community be allowed to continue even further. So some of the normative things that we bring into view is to know that if it wasn't right for us, why are we allowing it for our daughter? If it wasn't right when we saw it through our grandmother, why do we accept it in our lives? If we see that it hurts someone else, why do we still allow it and don't say anything or speak up about it? If like the young lady said, we are creators and we were caused to create, why do we allow a deficit to be born into our children by allowing obsession of, of trying to keep some normalcy about confusion and chaos, about oppression and submission to something that we know hurts our, our very core. Why do we continue to not speak up about it? So that goes into our causative. The causative deals with five things intraceable. One is we deal with our understanding of what it is that is in front of us. So it's almost like a child learns what they live. If you deal with female genital mutilation, you'll feel it's okay to have your private parts mutilated for the sake of whatever they did last generation. Some of us are dealing with this on a day-to-day -day basis. And just like I was, I was the one caused to stop it in my community. I am of the Fulani tribe of the Griot people of the Republic of the Gambia, but I was born here in the United States. And what that means 50 something years ago, <laughs> was that my parents decided that they were going to come to the United States for a better life. They knew that there was something greater than what was offered in our homeland and they wanted their children to have it. So when I came, when they came here, I was born here in the United States. When I came of age, they started talking about female genital mutilation in my, my household, not knowing what that was because I was very Americanized at that point. I was not very moved by it to the point where I brought it to a neighbor and I told my neighbor that this is what my parents were intending to do to me. And they, of course, because it is illegal in the United States, it has been since the early 50s, they brought the officials into my home. Not knowing that I caused such an uproar, needless to say, 50 some odd years later, I have not been a victim of female genital mutilation. It was stopped in my household with me. And now that I have four grown girls, my girls have not experienced female genital mutilation. And now I have 17 beautiful grandchildren and none of the girls have experienced it either. So just that one act, that one act of stopping it with me has now stopped it for three generations. This is how powerful just saying no is. This is how powerful the education factor in this, the causative reason to stop it now. I knew it was wrong with my mother. My mother knew it was wrong with her mother. So when it was stopped with me, it was seen that it did not need to happen in our community, in our tribe, in our household any longer. So the final piece in this is the reactionary piece. So what does this mean? Okay, it stopped with me and stopped with my children, it stopped with my grandchildren, but what does that mean in, in the global sense of this? This means that we have to look at it in these five categories. The first one is empathize. We have to empathize with the people that this is not going to be an easy thing. It's not going to be hard to, to change the mind of traditionalists. It's not going to be hard to change the very ardent religious mind. And it's not going to be very easy to change the mind of a woman who feels in, well, that feels less empowered than her male counterparts. So dealing with SDG five, which is gender equality, we are building up that empathy to understand that our voice is sufficient. If we say no, it is no. It is no for me, it is no for my children, it is no for their children. It is no for our community. Then we must define the problem. What are we saying no to? Are we saying no to the actual 
um, female gender circumcision of the woman? Are we saying no to the fact that it is not necessary? What are we saying no to? Are we saying no to the conceptualization of the problem or how it is affected in our, in our relationships day to day? Are we saying no to the fact that our fathers have a stronger hold by standing up and defending our daughters? Or are we saying no when a woman says, this is not for me? What are we saying no to? Then we must ideate, which means we have to throw ideas out there. We have to listen to the voices of the women that have been through it, the experiences of those that came before her, and help her to understand what is in her future and what does that look like. So we have to make sure that these women equally have a platform to stand on. Dealing with SDG 10, we are dealing with understanding that this does not have to happen. This is reducing inequalities. Um, so this means that we don't, we don't have to have this in our community. We don't have to have it in our tribe. We don't have to have it in the, the African people or the Indian people. We don't have to have it. We choose to have it because we don't want to cause a, a, a fight. We don't want to uh, disrupt anything, but we need to be disruptors. We need to be people that stand before this, this valuable force of women and say no more. Then we have to stand, we have to itemize a prototype, which means we have to look at this globally. What's going to work for the Indian women? What's going to work for the African women? What will work for European women? And then find a common denominator and put that into a program that is going to affect change immediately. I am very impatient when it comes to the definition of what it is that women are going to have right now. I am very impatient when it comes to the rights of women. We don't need to wait 20 more years to have rights, civil rights, human rights, equal rights for women. We need them right now because they're women that are suffering right now. What are they going to deal with? Do they have to continue to suffer because our, our mother suffered, because our grandmother suffered? No. There are solutions right now in place, and we need to take hold of that right now. We don't need to wait any longer. And the last part of this is we need to make sure that each woman is represented. So if you're going to be a barrister or you're going to be a lawyer in, in life, you need to take up a goal to defend women in their space. You don't need to gain money to do this. You don't need to ask for money. No woman should have to ask for or have to pay for to defend their human rights. It is a natural, organic right. If you are a lawyer and you feel as though, oh, well, I don't have any money to defend them. Yes, you do. The money is here. The money is here. If you can defend her with your mind, you can defend her with your mouth, you have given an invaluable service that no money can topple. So if you are a woman that is a lawyer, if you are a woman that is in the courts, if you are a woman that is a judge even, and you do not stand up for women's rights without asking for money, then you are doing a disservice to women. And I challenge each woman before me to take on the goal of one woman in your lifetime to stop the oppression, stop the mutilation, and stop the rededication of these cultural and tribal dysfunctions in society. And if we could do it for one woman and each woman do it for one woman within one generation, we will end this atrocity toward women. I wanna thank you for this time with you. I wanna thank you for this time in this space. Even though it is early morning, I am motivated. And I think I just, just got my caffeine for the rest of the day. So thank you so very much for having me. And thank you so very much for allowing me to be in this space. Namaste. My God, Dr. Amina Ali, you have been an inspiration. And it is very famous uh, in India where people uh, in uh, the movies, the Bollywood people say that no is not a word. No is a sentence in itself, which is why women should take up to say no and you are an inspiration and uh, we would all look up to you that how you are going ahead with this and we would definitely look up for women whom we can you know go ahead and uh, empower that as you said thank you so much for being with us it really means a lot so and and we can have a huge round of applause for uh, honorable dr amina ali as well well said now thank you so much so, Moving ahead uh, to our next uh, uh, guest speaker today, uh, she is the international chief guest today. Uh, her name is uh, Miss Ingrid Orozco, internationalist, diplomat, and expert in strategy, 
trade promotion, business expansion, innovation, and competitiveness. Ingrid has had a dynamic career in developing and implementing several projects in America, Africa, Asia, Europe, and Middle East, but also as an entrepreneur and businesswoman, creating different ventures such as Saxpress, Kosher, a uh, cultural technological platform to preserve the traditions in the Pacific Alliance region and you lead international in Mexico member of the women's president organization that is WPO president to the international organization of women in trade OWIT Mexico and the executive director for the academy for women entrepreneurs that is AWE Ingrid has worked for different countries governments trade promotion organizations and chambers of commerce such as Canada United Kingdom Brazil Turkey the United States Colombia, Shail, Malaysia, and China, reaching the international agreements and building the bridges of understanding between the different cultures and nations, such as the creation of the Mexican-Canadian Investment Consortium, the MOU between Manitoba Hydro and the Ministry of Energy, and the design for the first event of women business leaders in Pacific Alliance. In 2016, she was selected by the State De Department and the President's uh, Obama Initiative by LAI to grow businesses, enterprises, startups, and civil society organizations throughout the Western Hemisphere. A very warm welcome to you, ma'am. Over to you, ma'am. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And please receive my warmest greetings from Mexico directly. Um, I'm going to share my screen right now with you because I have some tips here that I really would like to to, to discuss with all of you. Yeah. And OK, here you go. Uh, here you go. Here you go. And Again, thank you very much. I'm very, I'm very pleased to be here today, this early morning, to share with you what it has worked with me. And I really would like to start uh, with this, with this image. So, what do these women have all in common? All of them, for sure, are leaders. All of them are international. But the most important part, they have decided to get out of their comfort zone. And here we, and here we are, ladies. Or you can choose courage. To stay in your comfort, in, 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 or you can choose comfort to stay in your in your in, in your in your in, in this zone, but you cannot have both. And what does that mean? What does that mean? Nowadays, imagine that seven, just seven of 193 countries that are members of United Nations Organization are women lead. And imagine that no one, no one has really, or, or no one has really achieved gender equality. We are living in a world like this, completely like this. And and and, and it's not, it's not, it's not come and or it's not um, surprise. Or it's not a surprise that when you type in Google, the place of a woman is, is still appearing in the kitchen at home in marriage. And you know what? That's okay. I mean, that's perfect okay. But the women not just believe or not just belong to those places. Women belong in all places where decisions are being made. As my dear Ruth Bader used to say, a woman place is in leadership. A woman place is in the love, in the space, in the politics, in the academics, engineering, peacekeeping, everywhere. And you know what? Yes, you can have it all. I'm pretty convinced and I have experimented that, that you can have it all. It's not just a matter of taking a decision or, okay, if I get married, I'm not going to succeed in my business. If I do this, I'm not going to have that because you can have it all. And I'm here today, this morning, just to tell you how you can have it all. And, and maybe it's going to, it's going to, it's going to look to you like, huh, but how should I have it all? Sometimes my team, they say, Ingrid, you are out of this planet. You are not from this planet, but yes, I am from this planet. And I'm going to share this morning my, 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 my secrets with you or what has really worked to me, right? To have it all. The first thing, a leader. I wanted to be a leader. Now, nowadays, I run five organizations into the public, private, and social organizations. Uh, but, but the leader is that person, you know, first and foremost, a human 
Only when we have the strength, the power to show our vulnerability is exactly where we can lead. Otherwise, how you can do it? How you can lead if you don't know who you are? How you can lead if you if you don't gonna connect with people, for example? And I say, uh, and maybe are you asking yourself today? It's like, aha, uh -huh, but how I'm gonna know myself, right? And I have here another recipe. That is, that is, this is a Japanese concept, meaning a reason for being, that is explaining to you, you know, once you start uh, analyzing this part, is explaining to you how to get into your, your, your reason of being, into your, 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 how, how to get into your inner you, right? To know yourself better. And this is, for example, explaining you how to, how to recognize your passion. That is what it, what you are good at and what you love. For example, in my case, my passion is traveling. My passion is 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 building this this uh, bridges of understanding between different nations, between different cultures. Here, for example, what is your mission? Your mission is something that you love and that and what you and what the world needs. For example, um, my mission is is exactly that to make easier the communication, to make the world understand each other. What is your vocation, for example? It's what the world needs and what you can be paid for. And I already paid for that, you know? I, I, I've been paid for that as well. And what is the profession? The profession, what you are good at and what you can be paid for. That is exactly what I do. I'm internationalist, I'm diplomat, I run an international organization, representative office in Mexico, etc., etc. So the advice number two, believe in yourself. You cannot imagine how many amazing women I have met that they don't believe on, on, on themselves. So the, 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 it, this is a specific thing. This is, this is one of the most important aspects. Believe in yourself is coming from be you. Be yourself because otherwise it's just not possible, right? When you're trying to be another person, you're not gonna connect with people. It's gonna be very difficult to you. So how do you recognize, how you recognize when you are believing in yourself, when you are playing hard, when you are in this zone that I call the winning zone, right? When you feel open, you feel curious, you feel, you feel committed to learn, you, you are really open to listen, to deeply speak. When you, you have so many questions, when you play hard, but also when you have a life of beliefs, that is exactly when you recognize where, when you are in the, in the, in the winning zone. My third advice this, this morning, this afternoon for you is get out of your comfort zone because exactly out of your comfort zone is where your dreams will come true. And, and, and imagine every, every single time that you are scared or that I am scared, let's say the scared, I always think about sharks. Sharks, they don't complain about Monday. Sharks, they get up early, they bring stuff, they go chasing, they, they are scaring, but they don't care about it because at the end of the day, this fear is just in our mind. It's, our, it's just in our, in our heads. The four, the four advice that I have for you, that, that I have for you this, this, this morning, this afternoon for you is, is an upper ones. That is, do what you love and you will more than succeed. You will soar and I will add, you will make magic. Once you are really, really enjoying what you are doing in your life, believe me, you're going to be the best and there is not a great rate and there is not a big effort because you are enjoying what you're doing. And I will explain this mathematically. Imagine that you, okay. Doing nothing at all, you know, for example, if you have here one times 360 times, you're gonna get one. But if you just change and you just just make a small consistent effort, you're gonna have a different total result, right? So doing nothing at all, again, again, and a small consistent effort is gonna make the difference. Uh, and and it, it is here where I really like to, to, to link it with entrepreneurs and with women-owned companies. There is the way, the way uh, women to become a millionaire. And this is, you know, this is this, this is a secret that I'm I really glad to share with you today. There is find a problem and solve it, but also find a need and fill it. And believe me, if you put this together and do whatever you want and you like and you enjoy, you will succeed for sure. The number five, relationships are very important, are everything, and great leaders are masters of relationship building. 
Um, the other one is never stop learning. Never stop learning. Every single year, my first New Year's resolution is I'm going to learn something new this year. No matter what, I'm going to learn I'm going to learn something new this year. And reading is the key that opens doors to many worlds. But reading, you know, is a way to shape your dreams as well. It's the way to make your dreams come true. Uh, the, the seventh one is look for mentors or even better, promoters. Why? Because mentors are always outside of the field. They can give you perspectives or they can give you points of view that you cannot see when you are inside of the of the of the main field, right? So get coaching, get support and, and that is the way to get support, to get advice and for sure to reach your goals. And finally, and this is one of the most important one and it is not a coincidence that prosperity is a feminine noun. Giving and receiving is the way to get prosperity is the channel to 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 be to be to be prosper right but unfortunately this is the most difficult part for some leaders to understand because or they give 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 or they receive 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 but they don't do both and prosperity is a channel that gets unblocked when you are giving both in the same way in my in my in my in my uh, company, every single year we develop, and this is a, a, an exercise that I have that I, that I have here. We develop an activity. We we came together this year with these four countries, for example, and we chose a foundation, and we chose a foundation uh, that now is in Chile that is helping uh, people or, or kids, girls, and and, and and boys with cancer, and and every single year we choose to give, but we choose also to receive, right? And, and and you cannot imagine once you are giving, you get what you give three times or four times or five times more. And that is exactly the prosperity channel. So, and I'm always, and we are always giving, we are always receiving. And for example, here we, we just recently launched a platform and that is an opportunity that I want to leave all here for you. Uh, we, we launched a platform in Latin America to, to give a digital opportunities, marketing marketing uh, offer, for example, marketing uh, positions to different ladies that are, that are moms that are working abroad um, or in, in different countries. And we are putting them together with job opportunities online, completely online. They don't need to go everywhere. They just need to have internet and to work from home. So for those interested, just please email us because that is exactly we 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 want to, to offer it, feel completely free of church so for you uh, opportunities just to, to 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 be present in the international labor arena. And finally I really would like to to end my presentation with a with a quote that I always just say in my in my in my presentation that is this has to do with the development of enterprises. Enterprises and enterprises, the key for the economic growth, which can generate social impact in the regions, always led by individuals with international knowledge and international skills that can be bridges of understanding between nations. And um, is your is your decision? Opportunity is now here or opportunity is no where so thank you very much i'm super happy to be here with you this morning this was so amazing i we just love hearing from you uh, miss uh, ingrid ronsko and uh, i believe that yes whenever we google women they are absolutely not we always thought that only in india maybe people are thinking that women are found in the kitchen but uh, I, you know, we come across through these sessions and get to know that, okay, the condition of women is all around the world is almost the same and we should not grip about being in whatever place we are. So yes, we need to change the situation and we are so blessed to hear the entire presentation. It was so amazing and insightful that uh, how you come up and change their own space and position in society. Thank you so much. Ingrid, and a big hand for you, and uh, congratulations to you for what you are and you, what you have achieved. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
uh, th that was a beautiful uh, thing to learn uh, from all uh, our uh, royal chief guest and our international chief guest and thank you again for being a part of this celebration it really means a lot to us so moving ahead <clears throat> magic happens when a woman begins to love herself she no longer needs acceptance from anyone and that's what her stories is all about we are here to celebrate and embrace these dynamic women who have super, who have superwoman stories to tell about their journey we will take the first story and continue with the rest after the panel discussions are over so uh for the first uh, her story miss uh, vaishali meoshia uh, vaishali ji are you there in the panel yeah she's there okay so i'll just give a brief intro about her and i'll uh, allow her to speak uh, thereafter vaishali ji is uh, vaishali neoshia is an entrepreneurial by nature techy and nature lover at heart believer in perseverance and supporter of equity she is also the founder and ceo of Uh, whose uh, flagship 4.0 amorphous investors include the Boeing company, the Alchemist, among others. Vaishali is an alumnus of Lamartnia Osmania University, Indian School of Business, and Goldman Sachs 10,000 Women, Stanford GSB, uh, Ignite Startup Leadership, Chandra Connect, and UN Impretech. She was mentored by Ms. Diana Powell, previously Deputy National Security Advisor to the U.S. President Trump, for strategy and head of impact investment at Goldman Sachs. As a part of the U.S. Consulate and the Fortune Magazine's Global Business Mentorship Program, Vaishali is a TEDx speaker and speaks at various conferences on technology, innovation, diversity, inclusion, entrepreneurship, and life lessons. She also mentors aspiring entrepreneurs and students and chairs committees on women in entrepreneurship and technology. She has been conferred awards for her leadership by Fiki, Women Economic Forum and Alip amongst all others. Mercius has been recognized for its groundbreaking innovation by Indian and global entities and media houses including IBM, Facebook, Vogue, CNBC and Global Entrepreneurship Summit. Vaishali ji a big round of applause for all your achievements and a very warm welcome to you over to you ma'am hey thank you so much nikita for that uh, uh, really long and and very very kind um, introduction and uh, i just want to say uh, thank you so much for having me here um, it's wonderful to have been part of this uh, summit uh, since yesterday i've been hearing some amazing women um, including uh, you know i heard uh, uh, the 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 tail end of what ingrid was talking about and i loved it i uh, loved the concept of um, uh, you know ikigai and finding it uh, it's also something that uh, you know one of my um, uh, favorite speakers talks about uh, simon sinek where he talks about finding your why and uh, in our culture there's another way to look at it where we basically talk about um, you know finding your uh, your sankalpa um, and uh, you know it's it's interesting how there's so many different um, you know ways to look at the same thing um but uh, uh, you know the bottom line being that uh, that it's it's up to us right finding our passion and finding what makes us work what is um, what is our core um driving force um so uh, so yeah very very happy to be here um i will keep uh, uh, my time uh, uh, short in terms of uh, you know in the in the monologue i don't want to bore all of our um, attendees here so i'll i'll leave a little time at the end for q and a um feel free to uh, put in your questions in the chat box uh, uh, and uh, you know i'll take it up in the last few minutes um so just to start off uh, uh, you know nikita's already said pretty much everything there was to say about me but um, uh, you know i just want to talk a little bit about uh, uh, you know um, my perspective from um, my entrepreneurial journey so to speak and uh, you know the last decade um you know we we're, we're talking about uh, inclusiveness and sustainability and diversity here and um, you know in the fourth industrial revolution honestly there are no rules and practices uh, which guarantee success um leaders have no choice but to embrace um uh, you know talent uh, emerging talent wherever it is coming from and um, and this is something i've experienced over and over in my own uh, journey so far where um there has never been anything which 
uh, which could have been scripted, right? Like even something that's happening another time, uh, you would think that, oh, I've done this before and so I'll, I'll ace it, but it doesn't work like that. Um, or something that has not worked in the past and has has been something that, um, you know, I may have uh, failed at or or not, uh, uh, not achieved the desired result that I wanted. Um, it turns out that, you know, if I change the approach, if I change the perspective, if I change just one small thing, the results are completely different. So, um, you know, and that's, I think, um, I think that's, that's one amazing thing about um, being humans, about being um, on this path, on this, on this journey we call life, you know, the space between two breaths, um, is the fact that at each moment, you're constantly learning. Um, and of course, there's always somebody who can learn from you. But the point is, um, even even things that we think we know about, we you know we, there's just so much more to learn um and so much more to understand and we uh, you know like they say it's it's about being a better person every day um one of the interesting things that uh, uh, you know that i've uh, discovered uh, you know in my um uh, in you know in, in the work that we've been doing is each time that we've pivoted um and we've thought that okay we're taking our past failures and our past learnings into account and this time things will work but there is something that is out of our control or something that is external which puts a kink in the works and things don't work the way we think they will or the way that we planned they would right so as they say um uh, uh, expect the best but prepare for the worst and that's essentially with everything um and uh, you know and just uh, sort of uh, extending along you know that uh, line of thought um one of the things that i have come to understand and i've heard it and I'm, I'm sure many of you would have heard this that the only thing that's constant is change and the faster we um learn to embrace accept and uh, work with change the better off we will be i mean so many times i've caught myself thinking oh why can't i just catch a break you know can one thing not go right um but the minute that i have uh, you know changed my perspective around it and and it's interesting the story behind how that happened um i was having a conversation with uh, you know with uh, uh, my co-founder and um, you know, it's easy to sort of, you know, like they say, preach to somebody else. Um, and sometimes epiphanies result out of it. And we were having a conversation and I was just giving an analogy of, um, you know, of a twister. Um, when you look at it spinning and, and you know, you look at it from the top, it's, it's going anti-clockwise. And then the same thing, if you look at, you know, you look at it from the bottom, um, it appears to be clockwise. And nothing's changed here except for my POV. Uh, my point of view has changed and, and nothing in the twister itself changed. Um, but that made a world of a difference. In this case, contradictory, right? Completely opposite or antithetical, um, where one is clockwise and the other direction is anti-clockwise. And that's something that, um, that I realized, uh, you know, it's if you just change perspective, the concept of glass half empty and half full actually becomes clear. Um, and again, you know, it's easy to talk about how happiness is subjective. It's a state of mind. But the real truth is it is, as is everything else in life. Everything is subjective. We talk about, um, uh, you know, for example, um, the concept of uh, women empowerment. Um, that itself is is different in different people's eyes you know that you might have one section of people um thinking women should be empowered in a particular way uh one section of people would say something else um maybe men would say something else and they're different there because there's so many different perspectives and there is no right or wrong um it's just different perspectives but something that i have learned um over the years is uh, you know to really be able to um take our uh, you know our strengths in our stride and focus on those um and you know like in hinduism uh, uh, you know they say that karm karte jao fal ki chinta mat karo which is essentially translating to keep doing what you need to do um keep putting in that effort and don't worry about the consequences or results because that's anyways out of your control um that's something that's worked and if nothing else it's worth to um you know it's worth to work in my state of mind um you know that keeps me happy and sane and i can keep doing what i'm doing because uh, you know there are all these um fancy things you would attribute to you know being um top brass or being or heading something or you know leading a company but hey there are a lot of problems in that side of the world as well and uh, you know and it's not easy when the buck stops with you because essentially um it's not about just making decisions it's about dealing with all the consequences of those decisions and uh, you know that itself is uh, uh, is an incredible experience um 
and uh, you know and so so i realized that uh, uh, you know the faster that i accepted um, that you know it, it's not about um, what's happening to me it's about how i react to it that really makes a difference i think that's been a key to um, my journey so far uh, in fact uh, you know in the time that uh, that we currently live in um, we you know when we talk about inclusiveness uh, a lot of the conversation has become uh, in my opinion uh, very insular um when we talk about uh, you know turn we we talk about making a change sustainable change in the way uh, you know the world is running right now um in the way businesses are run and operated um we often forget that our motivation and purpose or the end goal is not to turn the tables around it's to sort of remove the table right like remove the barriers um to make it completely inclusive and at this point is where um, you know it's also important to uh, uh, you know to talk about the concept of equity versus equality um something that uh, again has been a learning for me where it's not just about giving the same thing to everyone but it's empowering those underrepresented um, groups which require that additional um uh, you know additional um uh, help or assistance so to speak to actually get at a place where the opportunities can truly be equal and if that requires that uh, we have conferences like this we have um uh, vcs which are specifically funding women we have venture uh, you know funds for women um if we have uh, uh, you know hiring practices which include or uh, you know have a sort of quota system where you need to have this many women that you hire in a year um then that needs to happen but the larger goal here being that it's not about having a women's wing uh, to an industrial body and then um, you know and leaving it at that the idea is you have that wing you have that space you have that safe space for all of these people to come together to give them the necessary skills the learning um, the understanding before they pushed out into the larger ecosystem but that um that pushing out is the important bit here um it's about uh, you know so you train these people but then you push them out and and they're supposed to be absorbed into the larger ecosystem into the larger industrial body and that should be um in my opinion the aim on both sides uh, and something i've realized is that uh, we cannot be exclusive in this conversation either without including the the other side of the table so to speak without including the men in the conversation because like it or not um uh, at the end of the day you know these guys have been um, uh, running enterprises for a long time now they know how the game is played and um, and our idea is to sensitize them to um uh, to you know sort of a win-win situation where everybody is growing together we are the frogs in the well who all grow together um or who can all get out of the well if we help each other and um and so parallelly while we we sensitize women we encourage women we empower women to become part of these conversations to become part of um you know the larger ecosystem to to start their companies to um you know follow um uh, particular career paths on the other side men need to be sensitized as well in terms of um why this is important you know there are enough reports out there i mean uh, the one thing that a businessman understands is numbers and profits and telling them that hey mckinsey said that um, global gdp goes up by x percentage um if women uh, are equal in the workforce they get that right i mean india ex- itself for example um uh, you know is uh, the gdp could go up by 60% in just 5 years if we equalize the labor force which is just 30 right now 30% women um if we can bring it up to 50 and by the way that number has not changed since 1995 we need um you know we need work there um something surprising that that i have come across in fact is that um a lot of urban women um are actually dropping out of the workforce in india now i believe it's 16% representation of urban women and um, and there's several there, there's several other um, you know factors here at play um one good thing of course uh, uh, is that a lot of men are now accepting partners who are career women who are working but another problem i have seen emerge here is this superwoman concept where um, you know the woman is expected to be doing everything at home and then work is an additional duty that's not sustainable right we're talking about inclusiveness and sustainability and this is something that is not at all sustainable uh, because you can't be juggling two full time jobs um and, uh, and and at that point is where again including men in the conversation is so important because if division is there of work um uh, you know at the workplace there needs to be division of work um at home as well 
there is an interesting um, statistic I found in the UN report that came out this year um, by uh, the EFA, where they found that um, in India um, about 82 percent uh, women in the prime, you know, working age, which is I believe 47 to 54, um, 82 percent of those women um, are single. Um, there's uh, about 48 percent, I believe, are uh, you know uh, have partners, and there's an even smaller number where they have partners and children which basically tells us that you know at each step here um where you include a little more in in the personal equation um there is a compromise made on the career front and of course it can be argued here a lot of this is by choice that's completely fine more power to those women um but uh, but the other side of the coin is also the fact that a lot of this could be happening because it's just not sustainable um and so here again um you know the you know the thing that i would like to point out is it, it, it works only if it's both places um, and this is something that i have seen uh, in close quarters uh, you know with uh, uh, you know with friends with uh, with colleagues with uh, co-workers um, where uh, literally a lot of their um, performance and their uh, uh, you know their um, sort of mind space uh, you know things just change based on how much help they get outside of the workplace because we think that we're able to separate but um, that doesn't really work so Yes, yeah, so I'd just like to sort of um, open up for Q&A, um, ending with the fact that, uh, you know, that in the conversation of inclusiveness and sustainability, we need to remember that, uh, this, that, you know, that's something that we have to think about as well, so that we also are inclusive and we also look at things as being sustainable, um, including not judging other women for their choices, you know, for staying at home. And again, um, not judging men either for their choice of wanting to stay at home. At the end of the day, free will goes both ways, right? Um, so, so I would just uh, you know leave it at that, and let's remember that all of these summits and conferences that we have, it's brilliant to have uh, women attend it and listen and talk uh, about these things. But it's also important to push men, incentivize men to attend these conversations because um, we need that part of the world educated as well um, to make this this entire thing a success and to really work. And hopefully we'll reach a world soon where the concept of uh, inclusiveness, diversity um, is just not going to be there at all because the normalized world would have equal representation anyway. So this would not even come up as, um, you know, conversation. So, yeah. Thank you. Mishma, am I audible? Uh, yes, yes, Nikita ji. You are, you are. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So that was amazing uh, to hear from you, Vaishali. And uh, uh, absolutely, the equations have to be, uh, you know, calculated and equalized for, for most. So I will uh, just congratulate you for all your achievements as of now and uh, will wish you all the best for further more successes, uh, success stories to tell us. So, um, so I'll just end this segment of our discussion with the saying because all of us cosmopolitan sitting over here as a woman I have no country as a woman I have no country as a woman my country is the whole world said by Virginia Woolf and I just believe that uh, this session has given us uh, so much to take away for all the audience listening to us thank you so much uh, we'll be uh, coming back after a short commercial break just for one minute so uh, let's see you on the other side of the break thank you so much Thank <laughs> you.